Okay. 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 Last time, all the variances that we calculated, we assumed that there was no opening stock and there, there was no closing stock. There was no loss also in the production process. But I'm just thinking outside the box. Assuming in the exam, we are giving information on opening stock and normal losses. The, the, the way we did it under the budget, where you, you are going to gross it up. So assuming they say, oh, okay, the actual unit produced was 2,500 units. And there was a normal loss of 10% in the production process. It means that the production over here, which is 2,500, is not the actual unit produced. So for you to know the actual unit produced, you have to gross this one up to 100 to the actual unit by dividing this by. What are we going to divide it by? OK, let me use 2,000 so that we can get accurate figure. So you are giving the information about the actual results. And the question says that the actual unit produced during the month or during the period was 2,000. But there was a, a loss of 10% in the production process. It means that the 2,000 over here is not the actual unit produced after all. So for us to know the actual unit produced, we need to gross this back to 100%. Grossing it, we did it under budget. And we said that this is 90%. So if you want to make it 100%, we divide the unit by 0 0.9. So we are going to have 2,000 divided by 0 0.9. So I'm still getting, I want to get a whole number. I'm still getting decimals. I don't know. So let's assume that the actual production level is 2,000 after gross, is 2,500 after grossing it up. So this will be, the unit that you'll be using to calculate your standard quantity, standard hours, and everything. Because the actual hours given to you will be based on the actual production level, not the net one, not the one, the, the quantity that was produced. No. If they are giving you actual hours used, actual quantity used, those quantities were based on the initial production level, not the goods that were declared to be effective. It was on both effective and those goods that were declared effective. So if you want to know your standard quantity too, you have to calculate it on the original production level. So sometimes I see it here to examine questions like this. They can give you a normal loss in the production process. What you do is that the same thing that we did under budget. You gross it up. They can also give you opening, opening stock of finished goods Closing stock of finished goods. What you have to do is that you have to find your actual production level by calculating the actual production by using your, your, your sales demand. You add your closing stock, then you subtract your words, your opening stock to know the actual production level. That is the actual unit that you are going to use to find your standard quantity and everything. There can be a question like that. You are here to do something like that. So if they are giving you that the <clears throat> they will give you the sales demand. If they are giving you closing stock and opening stock, they will give you a sales demand. So you use the sales demand to find your production, to, to find your actual units that you have to produce or actual unit produce. And they can also give you the material usage requirement for one quantity. So it means that you are going to prepare a whole budget on your own before you can do something. So if you are giving opening stock and closing stock, you have to, before you can know the actual quantity purchased, you have to know your material usage requirements. You add your closing stock, then you subtract your what? Opening stock. Sometimes they can also give you that, okay, the actual quantity purchased was 1,000 kilograms. But they have a closing stock of 1,000. It means that the actual quantity used in a production process will be 9,000 kilograms. So they can be, they can do a lot of things. They can do a lot of things. I was just there and this thing was coming to my mind. So I'm here to get a question on it. I will try to get a question on it and put it on the page. Then you 
that you find time to solve maybe one question on it and we see how we go about it. But any any time that you have a question like that, which is on standard costing, it is like the normal budget that you are going to prepare production budget to know the actual quantity produced. It is if you want to know the actual quantity purchased, you are going to you are going to prepare material purchase budget. If you want to know the actual labor labor hours used, you are going to prepare the labor hours budget in in hours. You have to do all those things before you know the actual hours worked, actual materials purchased, and those kind of things. They are yet to. I don't have any question on in the tutorial notes on this one, so I will try and get question on it. Then we try and see how we can go about it. But that is the general overview. All right. Today, I want us to talk about uh, operational, what we call operational planning. Let me put the planning first. Planning and operational, operational variances. Okay. <clears throat> All right. If we are talking about planning and operational variances, what we are basically talking about is, you see, at the beginning of the year, at the beginning, before you start this particular class or before you register for a paper, you are saying that you are going to get 65, 65% in MA. Best two weeks to the class, you are now saying that, no, you can't get a 65 again. You are going to get 60 in ME. What is happening? What is happening there? What it means is that you have now got the feel what it takes to sit for the exams. Then you realize that no, at your planning stage, you need to forecast well. Okay. You have to replan. Okay. So you can see that you are now saying that no. What you are thinking about first, you are wrong, isn't it? So you have you 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 have you have to like based on some things now. No, you can't get a sixty five again. So it's this time. It is because you haven't started a class yet. That is why you are saying you get sixty five. Now you have started a class. You realize that no, this thing you cannot get it again. So this now you have started a class. This is the time that you start working towards a sixty. But this time you are not doing anything. So we call this stage the planning stage, and we call this one the operational stage. The time that you start working towards the system. So what normally happens is that the organization to before they will start doing anything, they will set targets. They will set targets. At the management level, they will set targets. But they realize that no, taking into consideration the things that will happen, they realize that no, what we are saying is no, it's actually high. So we should reduce it. Or what we are even saying was actually low. So we should increase it. So if you are having the budget that you, you haven't started anything, you are saying that, okay, you are going to produce 2,000 units. And these 2,000 units, you are going to use a labor hours of 10,000 on it. Okay. No. Getting to the operational level, now people are saying that, no, the budget, that the, the 10,000 labor hours that you are saying is too small. So we cannot do that again. So we now revise our labor hours to 15,000. In this case, you can see that there is a difference between the labor hours. So at the at the planning stage, at the top management level, they are saying that 10,000. But getting to the tactical level, to the operational level, they are just saying they are now realizing that no. Producing this quantity of goods, you need more labor hours. So they have to come and revise the budget. They have to come and revise the budget. So they will revise the budget before they will give it to those who are going to implement it. So a situation where the original plan has been revised. The difference between the original plan and the revised, the, the revised plan is what we call the planning variances. So if you look at this, management is talking about 10,000 10, labor hours. Now getting to or starting where you realize that no, we can't use the 10,000 labor hours again. We have to use 15,000. It, it means that there is a difference of 5,000 in the labor hours. So the difference in the 
plan set at the planning stage and also at the tactical level. The difference over there is what we call the planning variances. The planning variances. So after the labor hours has been revised to 15,000, we have now realized that at the end of the production level, people has been people have used 20,000 labor hours. So this 20,000 labor hours has been used at the operational level. It is used on the actual production. And actual production takes place in the operational level. So after we revise the labor hours to 15,000, still they have used 20,000 as the actual labor hours used. We are still getting a difference of 5,000. So this 5,000 is what we call the operational variances or the operational variance in labor hours. So from the planning stage to the revised stage is what we call the planning variances. From the revised stage, after the plan has been revised and we compare with the actual performance or actual results, the difference between the revised and then the actual result is what we call the operational variances. It's what we call the operational variances. So the planning variances occurs at the top management level where the people, they don't have any idea about what they are saying. But they have realized that no, what we are saying and the target that we are setting is too much. So we should reduce this or we should increase it. The reduction from the original one to the new one now is what we call the planning variance. But after revising it, we give it to the people and the people, they have done the work. The actual work done compared with the revised figure that we give to them is what we call the operational variances. It's what we call the operational variances. So what we do is that we calculate the variances for the planning level and we calculate the variances for the operational level. Then you can total the two up. All right. So that is what we do. That is what we do. It's the same calculation, but just that if you take the revised level, the revised level now becomes the actual level for the planning stage. If you take the operational level, the actual level now becomes the actual performance. And the revised level now becomes the standard for the operational level. So let's pick a question. One question we demonstrate that. Then I will move on to what we call performance evaluation. We are finishing today. So you push you. You sit well. Let's move on. All right. Question two. Someone should read. Let's move on. Who is reading? Let's move on. The person should be said that we move on fast, fast. Jocelyn, are you there? Read. Question two, right? Yes. Um, Card manufactures product S. In the annual budget for the current year, the standard direct labor cost for product X is three hours per unit times 15 CDs per hour equal to 20, uh, 45 CDs per unit. Okay. This cost was based on the expectation that new working procedures and new equipment will be used to reduce the labor time per unit. The changes have not yet been introduced. However, in retrospect, it's, it's decided that a more appropriate direct labor cost for product X should be four hours per unit times 15 Ghana CD per hour. Okay, stop there. What, what are they doing to the budget? What are they doing, the are they doing to the what are they doing to the original budget? What are they doing to the original budget? They are thinking the hours. They are the Okay, basically they are revising the, the initial budget, isn't it? All mm -hmm. right, so from the initial stage to the revised stage now is what we call... Yeah, I think the hours, yes, yes. Okay, so it, you can see that they have increased the hours, but the, the, the price is still the same. Okay, so from, from the stage, from the three hours per unit stage to the four hours stage is now, is what we call the planning stage. So you can see that there will be a planning variance of one hour per unit, isn't it? Yes. All right, let's move on. In the current year, 2,000 2, units of product X were produced. This took 8,200 hours to make, and the direct labor cost was 1,800 required. Okay. 
reconcile the actual direct labor cost to the original standard cost using planning and operational variances. Okay. B, show the planning and operational variances if 2,000 units were made in the period in 8,200 hours at a direct labor cost of 101,600 1, Ghana cities. And it was decided in retrospect that the appropriate, the appropriate direct labor cost for the product X to be four hours per unit times 12 hours uh, times 12 Ghana CD per hour equals to 48 per unit. Okay. So what they are saying is that we should calculate planning variances. At the planning stage, the planning stage lasts at when the planning stage is from is from when management give out target, management give out budget to the stage that the management has revised the initial budget. So the planning stage will now start from where they have given them this and where they have revised it, isn't it? All right. So if you are calculating planning variances, the initial budget is is being taken as the standard and the revised budget is being taken as the actual performance for the planning stage for the planning stage so at the planning stage what is happening you can see that the, there will not be any any price variances for the planning stage because the price are still 15 cd 15 cd isn't it but what what are we going to have for the planning stage what will be the variance that we are going to have at the planning stage there The variance is it going to be on the cost or on the hours? Go on the hours. It will be on the plan. It will be on the hours, isn't it? Yes. So we look at the planning variance, which will be on the hours. Okay. Let's come to the question now. How many units are we saying that we are going to produce? Two thousand units. And how many hours do we did we say originally that we are going to use for the two thousand? Eight thousand two hundred. No, this is the. No, it will be the three hours. Three times hours. The two thousand times the two thousand. And that will give us how many hours? Sixty thousand. Okay. Um, that will give us sixty thousand hours. That was the initial plan, isn't it? Yes. Okay. But we now revise it to what? Four. Four, hours. Four hours. And that will give us how many hours? 8,000. Okay. So this is supposed to be 6,000. Yeah. Okay. So that will now be 8,000. Are we decreasing the hours or we are increasing it? Increased. So what is the variance there? What is, what's 2, the difference? 2,000. Okay. So for you to calculate this variance, we now look at the hours, which is the standard hours. The standard hours, if you are calculating planning variances, we need the, the, uh -huh. the, the initial the initial figure, the initial estimate as the standard, and the revised yeah. one as actual. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the standard hours will be the three times the two thousand, which we have gotten six thousand, minus the what? The actual hours that we are going to use, which will be the four times the two thousand, which is the eight thousand. Yeah. Okay. And this will be multiplied by the what? Standard cost. Standard rate. Okay. Yeah. We, we, are, we are looking at planning variance efficiency. We are looking at the hours. So this is efficiency. We multiply by the standard rate. Okay. Standard rate is 15. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. What will be the variance? Two. Yeah. Two thousand. Is it? It's thirty thousand. Efficiency formula. That one that you said. Yeah, it is. It is the same formula that we use. It's the same formula that we use, but just that we do it at different level. So we do at the planning <laughs> level first before we come to the uh, the operational level. It's the same standard. You calculate labor efficiency, labor price, material usage, material price. is the same thing that we do. Okay, sir. Okay, but just that we are considering planning stage first. Planning stage starts from 
the time that the budget was set to the time that they revised the budget. So the initial plan was taken as a standard and the revised one now is the actual for the planning level. So if you come to the operational level, it is the revised budget that you now give to them to operate. So if you come to the operational level, the revised budget becomes a standard for them and the actual becomes the actual performance. All right. So, so this one, is it going to be favorable or adverse? Adverse. Adverse. Yes. Okay. So let's come to operational level. Efficiency, uh, the planning level, we have only one, one variance to calculate. Operational variances. The operational variances, we calculate both. We calculate the efficiency and the usage, all of them. Because that is for the actual. That is a normal normal variance that we, cal we use to calculate. The operation, the planning level two, we should have calculated two variances. If the revised labor cost per unit, rate. labor rate per mm -hmm. unit was increased or reduced. Yeah. So if this should have been two off, it means that there is a reduction in the price too. So we have to calculate labor rate variances too. Okay. Are we okay? All right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Let's move on to the operational variances. Operational variances, the first one, we, we calculate the rate, the labor rate first. This one, we, they are giving us labor. They can also give you material. We do the same thing. All right. So labor variance, we are calculating uh, rate first. Let's come to the rate. If you are looking at the operational level, the revised budget now becomes the standard for them. Becomes the standard for them. And this is now the actual. We compare with the, the standard. So what are we doing? We are going to do standard rate minus actual rate times the actual hours worked yeah. or paid for, yeah. isn't it? All right. So what is our yeah. standard rate? 15. Okay, our standard 15. rate is 15. But calculate the actual rate for me. I will, I will still say something. 14.73. You can see that the, the, the decimal is recurring, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So what you are going to do is that just use the standard rate to multiply the actual hours work, which is 8,000. Okay. Yeah, minus the, yeah. the actual amount paid. Not that you do it one by one. So you just do it like this. Because at the end of the day, you use the actual hours to multiply the actual rate to get the actual amount paid again. So for it to be at the surface, I just use the actual hours to multiply the standard rate and maintain the actual amount speed. All right. So what would be the variance there? Fifteen times eight thousand two hundred. I'm having one. You get two thousand two hundred. Okay. Let Let me put all of them together so that people will not come and ask me how do you get that figure. Labor rate. Mm. So two thousand two hundred what? Favorable or adverse? Two hundred, yes. Favorable. Uh, uh, favorable. Okay. So the next one will be yes. labor efficiency what? Efficiency. Okay. Labor efficiency. Variance. Variance. So labor efficiency. Labor efficiency is calculated as the what? The standard hours multiplied by the what? The uh, minus the actual hours multiplied by the standard rate. Let's come here. Standard rate. Mm. What will be the standard hours now? What will be our standard hours? 8,000. That 8, is 000. the four hours per unit multiplied by actual output. Okay. I'm that saying that if you count to operational level, the revised budget becomes the standard. So four hours mm. is not the standard rate times the actual unit produced. That will be 8,000. That's supposed to be the actual hours. That's supposed to be the hours that we have to use to produce this based on our standard. Okay. So that is the standard hours. The standard is 8,000. But what was the actual hours used or worked? So what is our standard rate? 8,200. Okay, what is our standard rate? 15. 15. 15. So, labor efficiency. Mm. 
is equal to 200 times what? 15. So labor, 15. labor efficiency. How much are we getting? 30. Hey, 3,000 right there. It's 3,000. Adverse. Okay, 3,000 adverse. Yes. What is the question saying? Now, should we consider the actual direct labor cost to the original standard cost using planning and operational variances? Okay. So, what was the original standard cost? What was the original standard cost? The original standard cost was 45,000 per 40, 45 Ghana cities per unit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. How many units we have produced? 2,000. So what would be the 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 standard cost for the 2,000 units? It will be 90,000. Okay. So we start with the, we normally start with the reconciliation between we normally start with the, the original cost between the actual okay. reconciliation between the actual and the original original standard cost. Okay, <clears throat> so reconciliation between the actual and the and this one. So the what was the standard cost? Ninety thousand. Okay, that is forty five by two thousand. Okay, forty five multiplied by two thousand. That will give us ninety thousand. Okay, then the variances that we have calculated, then we add. What was the first variance that we calculated? Labor rates. It was a planning, planning, which was a labor, which was a labor usage at the planning level, isn't it? The first one was at the planning level, isn't it? Yes. So, okay, that is 30,000, isn't it? So we have the planning, the planning variance. That was what, adverse, isn't it? Yeah. But this is a cost. Since it's an adverse, we add. Okay. The next one that we calculate was the operational variance, which is for labor rate. Operational rate variance. That was what? Adverse or favorable? Favorable. Favorable. So we net it against the cost. So 2,200. Then the last one that we calculate was efficiency, operational efficiency. Yeah. So we add operational add efficiency variance. So ad adverse, right? Yes. Three thousand. So let's let's put them together and see whether we can get the actual labor cost. Okay. Okay. So this is how we do the reconciliation. So this is now the actual. 120,800. Okay. Actual labor cost. Mm. Okay. So basically, this is how we do the planning variances.
what you have to know is that the initial the initial budget up to the revised level represent the planning level so the mm. initial one is the standard for the planning level and the revised is the actual for the planning level if you come to the operational level it is the revised budget that will be given to the operational managers to implement so if you come to the operational level the revised is not the standard for them the actual is not the actual for them that is how we do it ladies and gentlemen we are done with standard costing and variance analysis let's look at performance evaluation so what about the b oh sorry I uh, should show the plan and operational variances if 2,000 units were made. <laughs> okay, the show period. the planning and operational variances if 2,000 units were made in the in the period in the period in its 8 down 20 hours at a direct labor uh, cost of 100,000 101,600 Okay, and it was decided in retrospective that the appropriate direct labor cost for product X should be what? Four hours per unit times two, 12 Ghana cities yeah. per unit, making 48. So what yeah. they are giving you right now is the revised what? Budget. This is the revised budget given to you. Are you okay? But what was our mm -hmm. original budget? What was our original budget? That is three hours by 15. So if you come to the revised budget, they are increasing the hours and reducing the what? And reducing the rate. By reducing the rate, isn't it? All right. Yeah. So what we are going to do is that you can see that all the two elements are changing. So we are going to calculate the planning variances for both the usage and also the rates, isn't it? Yes. All right. So what we do is this one. If you come to the... The planning variances. We do rate first. The rate, the labor rate. Mm -hmm. So for the labor rate, it will be the standard rate minus what? The revised rate. Which is 12, isn't it? Yes. Times the actual hours. The actual oh, hours yes. will be, the revised level will be 8,000, which is 4 times what? 2,000. Are we okay? Yeah. Okay. Times two thousand hours. What would be the difference? No, uh, the hours is not two thousand. No, the out the, the hours, output. The hours yeah, is four thousand. The, output, thousand. Is the, the eight thousand two hundred is the actual hours used. The actual level does not come to the planning level. So the plan, if you come to the planning level, this is, if you come to the planning level, this is the actual performance for the planning level. So if you are producing 2,000 units and you are using four hours as the yeah, revised yeah, one, yeah. it means that the actual yeah. hours used will be four times this one. Yeah, this one affects only 8, the operational yeah. level. The actual yeah. 8,200 is affecting yeah, the operational level. Are you yeah. okay? Okay. Yeah. So the difference will give us what? Three times 2,000 is 6,000. Mm. Am I correct? Am I getting 6,000? Mm. I'm not seeing see your screen. I'm not seeing your screen. Really? Yeah, it's down on my. Okay, so screen. I should I should put it up small. Okay. Can you see now? Uh huh. Yeah, it's now okay. visible. So fifteen minus twelve times two thousand. I'm getting six thousand. Six thousand. So is the two hours two thousand hours? I'm not comfortable. You say no. we are multiplying. Is 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 the is the it's supposed to be eight thousand? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I thought I was seeing stars. <laughs> but you are people are seeing their team, but they don't want they don't they can't talk because they are thinking about what they are thinking. Is wrong. Ah. Because some people they are thinking that what they what they want to say what they are thinking is wrong. That would twenty four thousand. Is it twenty four? Yes, yeah, three eight. Okay. Twenty four. Yeah. Maybe where where I passed before coming today, I didn't pass the right place. 
Okay. Then the next one is the, the hours also has changed. So we look at the labor efficiency. The labor efficiency will be calculated at the standard hours, which is the the hours mm -hmm. based on the, the original budget, which is the three hours times 2,000. Mm -hmm. okay. That will give us 6,000, am I correct? Mm -hmm. Minus yeah. 8,000. This will multiply by the standard rate, which is the no, rate. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. It's the same as the one that we calculated yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. So what are we getting? 30,000. 30,000. Okay. 30,000. Then we now, this this is at the planning level. We now count to the yeah. operational level. Operational. So the operational level, we do the same calculation again. All right. So operational level, we are going to use the labor rates which will be the what? The standard rate. What will be the standard rate now? 12. 12. 12. Okay. Manage. Ah, okay. That one will also give us. Desmond. Mm. It will give us Desmond. So it will be 12 times yeah. the actual hours used, which is 8,200. Mm -hmm. Then we subtract yeah. it from the actual amount paid, which is 10,600. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So labor yeah. rate is what? Mm. So that you will get 9400. So that is a 12 by 8, 200. 10, 1, 600. Adverse or favorable? Is adverse. Adverse. By how much? 3200. Okay. So what, what will be the next one? We look at the labor efficiency, isn't it? Okay, labor efficiency will be standard rates, standard hours, standard hours. What will be the standard hours now? Standard hours will be what? We say 6,000. 6,000. Six or eight? Eight. Four by... Four by 2,000. Is what? 8,000. Okay. Minus the actual hours is what? 8,200. 200. Times the standard rate. What is the standard rate? 12. 12. What are we getting? 2,400. Okay. Labor efficiency. That's address. Okay. 2,400 address. Okay. So that's, this is what they're asking us to show. Very simple. All right. Let's look at performance evaluation. We are finishing it today. Okay. If they are talking about performance evaluation, we are just talking about an entity having more than one division. More than one division. If the entity is having more than one division, the entity would like to find out which of these divisions or which of the divisions are performing better and where, to they, where they were going to uh, direct their scarce resources or their limited resources to. Or if the entity is, is just a single entity, at the end of the day, the shareholders will want to appraise the performance of the entity, whether the entity is doing well, whether they, to, they should keep their resources in, in the entity or they should take it elsewhere. So if you are talking about performance evaluation, you are talking about you trying to figure out whether the company or the entity or the unit is doing well or is performing better or is performing low. So if you talk about performance evaluation, we use both financial measurements and also use some non-financial what performance managing uh, measurement techniques <clears throat> so for performance evaluation what we are trying to do is that if we, at the end of the exam we can decide to measure whether the student has done well or they have not done well so we can look at your results and see okay how many people are passing how many people did not pass so okay these people did not pass so we didn't do work Sometimes you can use figures to measure performance. Sometimes you can also use other things 
which are not figures. You can also use qualitative words, characteristics. Why is these people performing well? Because they have a strong customer base. They have a strong labor force. We can also try to use the, those measures that are not figures. But if you talk about performance evaluation, we have so many ways of measuring performance of an entity. The first one, we can use ratio analysis. We can use ratio analysis. The ratio analysis, we can use liquidity ratios to see whether the, the, the entity is performing well or they have cash to settle their debts as at when they fall due. We can also use profitability ratios. We will look at the financial performance of the entity. How are they managing their face costs? How are they managing their variable costs? Is the company profitable? We look at the net profit margin, the gross profit margin, the return, the return on equity, return on capital employed. We use those profitability ratios. If you count liquidity, we are looking at whether the entity has cash, enough cash to settle their liabilities or their short-term obligations as at when they afford you. So we use the current ratio and then also the active test ratio or the quick test ratio. Or the quick ratio. If we come to this one, we look at the asset turnover. Is the entity using their asset efficiently? We can also use efficiency ratios like trade receivable collection period, trade payables payment period, inventory turnover, inventory turnover period. We can also use any other ratios. The question can give you any other ratios. November 2019, it was the first question that will come on performance evaluation was ratio analysis. From then, they are here to bring question on ratio analysis again. So if you are talking about performance evaluation, we can also use ratios to measure the performance. If you talk about profitability ratios, I just wish that all of you should be doing uh, FR so that I have, I, have, I, have, I have taught people ratio analysis already. So you just go and watch the video. But don't worry, let's do something. Profitability ratios so they can give you profitability ratios under the profitability ratios we have three or four main ratios which is the net profit margin net profit margin the net profit margin we are just looking at the portion of our revenue that is retained as profits after we have paid all our total cost what portion of the profit is retained as what profit what portion of the profit is retained as profit? What portion of the revenue is retained as profit after paying our total cost? So what percentage of the revenue is retained as what? Profits. That is a net profit margin. So we look at the net profit before interest and tax, before interest and tax over the revenue or net revenue, depending on the one that the question is giving to you. All of this multiplied by Hundred percent. So they will give you a statement of financial position, and you do that. You come to what we call the gross profit margin. The gross profit margin. A gross profit margin can be named as our contribution margin. What after paying, after taking care of our direct cost, our variable cost, what portion of the revenue is maintained? That is a gross profit margin. So the gross profit margin can be named as contribution margin, which is a gross profit over revenue or the answer times 100. We can also use return on capital employee, which you call the ROSI, which is equal to the net profit, the net profit before interest and tax divided by net asset or capital employee. Capital employee. Net asset or capital employee. The net asset over here is total asset minus current liabilities or yes. shareholders farm plus long-term liabilities. Long liabilities. Okay, this is multiplied by 100. Ah, did we all do FR? No, I don't do it. I have been exempted. Ah, okay. Oh, if, you, if all of you, you are doing FR, then we can just move on like that too. But let's, let's have one question on it and see. Okay. So from this one, the two are okay. Sometimes you can also use return on equity. If you're looking at the return on equity, it is a net profit after tax. Let me use a return on equity at once. Return on equity is net profit after tax divided by shareholders fund. 
shareholder is fund shareholder is fund shareholder is fund times 100 all of these times 100 then if you, if they ask you about liquidity ratios liquidity ratios we use liquidity ratios we use current ratio and also peak okay. ratio if you talk about current ratio we are just talking like this if our total current asset is this and our total current liability is this how many times can we pay our liabilities our total current asset is 20000 our total liabilities our total current True. liability is 10000 how many times can we times. use our current Two asset times. to pay our current liabilities Two times. How did how did you get a two times? I divided. Divide what and what? I divided the, the twenty thousand over ten thousand. That is that is current ratio. How many times can our current can our short term resources pay off our short term obligation? Short -term that is that is a, that is basically about the current ratio. That is why it is calculated as a current asset. Current asset. Over our current what? Minus liability. Uh, over uh, current liabilities. This is a ratio. All is to one. So if you do it, you see that it will be two is to one. Yeah. Yeah. So two is to one means that your current assets can pay your current liabilities how many times? Two times. Twice. That is a meaning. Okay. But if at the end of the day, we are talking about the, the quick ratio. The meaning is that how quick can we settle our, our current liability? You know that some of the assets, we have to wait before we can, we have, it will take time before we convert yes. it to cash, isn't it? Yes. Okay, yes. one of them is what? One of the current assets that you, it will Inventory. Is the inventory. So if you want to settle the people today, you can't use the inventory to settle them. Yes. Because you have to go and look for people that will what? That will buy the inventory. So right. we are talking about if and may not pay cash, they may buy on credit. Exactly. So what if you talk about quick ratio? We are just saying that how many times can we use our available resources that can easily be converted to cash to settle our to pay. current liabilities? That is why mm -hmm. we have current asset managed closing inventory because the inventory will take time for us to, to have the cash from it. So current asset. Before it Converted current asset managed current asset managed inventory, which is a closing inventory, yeah. all divided by what current, current liabilities. liabilities. Okay, okay, so this is the they can also ask you about the efficiency ratios. The efficiency ratio can be asset turnover, inventory turnover, inventory turnover period. Receivables, mm -hmm. collection period, you know how to do those ratios, isn't it? Let's mm -hmm. look at them. Asset turnover. I wish all of you should do FR, but I will still ask some of you today. Okay. I will send the the lecture notes on the FR, the ratio analysis, so that you listen to it very well. All right. Asset turnover is how many times do we use our resources to generate the reported revenue? Mm -hmm. Or Sales over assets. So is the revenue over the asset over over the total assets? You can make it total assets. Sometimes they can give you net asset turnover. So you just look at the net assets. They don't. They say asset turnover. Use the total assets, or you can use the total non-current assets. Mm -hmm. Any of them is correct. Okay. Okay. Right. This is calculated as 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 this one. As uh, in times, in time. So we are saying that what revenue? One CD of our total asset is generating how much revenue? That's what they are saying. All right. Sometimes they can ask you to write reports. Sometimes they can ask you to write reports. If you are writing a report or memo, it has a format. The first one is to who are you writing the report to? It can be the managing director. Then you put the managing director there. Managing director there. Then who is writing the report from? This will give you mark so from the finance the finance manager or the accountants. 
or the management accountant, anyhow you want to put it. Okay. The date that you are writing the report, you can assume any date or the date that they ask you to write the report, you can put a the date there. Okay. So let's assume that this is, we are writing this on 30th September 2023. What is a subject? A subject. A subject means the heading. If they are asking you to do the analysis of the financial performance of the company, then the subject yeah. will be the analysis yeah. of the financial performance of this and this company. This will give you two marks. Then after the report, you come to introduction. You introduce what you are writing. So the introduction, you can say as discussed earlier, I hereby present you the analysis of the financial performance of this and this company for your perusal. Full stop. All this report considers the financial performance of the company over two years, 2021 and 2022. Or the company, this report is written, <clears throat> this report is written based on this company as a benchmark, or we use a competitor company as a benchmark. Anything that you are, you are doing about the report. Well, the easiest way is that as discussed earlier, or as discussed I hereby present to you the analysis of the financial performance of Kojo Chrome Limited for the year ended 31st December, this and this. This report considers the following ratios, profitability ratios, liquidity ratios, efficiency ratios, and anything. That is all. Then after the introduction, you now come to the body. So are you going to say that the company is profitable? If the company is profitable, if you are saying that the company is profitable, why are you saying that? Okay, the company is profitable because yeah. over the years, their net profit margin has increased to this and this. This shows that the entity was able to manage its fixed costs and its direct costs. The, the entity engaged in other forms of advertising, which boosts their revenue level and anything like that. If you are saying the company is profitable, why are you saying that? Okay, they are profitable because they are net profit margin ratio is increasing. This shows that if the net profit margin is increasing, what is the meaning? It means that the company is, that is, is managing its indirect and direct costs very well. The company is also doing some form of promotional activities or giving a discount and those things that is making their revenue high. Before you say their revenue is high, yeah, well, look at yes. whether the revenue is high or not. If the revenue is not high, don't say the company is doing promotional activities to no. Sometimes you say what is causing that based on the figures. So if the revenue in this year is lower than the, the current year or last year is lower than the current year, it means that the company is doing some promotional activities that increase their revenue level. So you can make that particular section. The company is also using their asset very well and any other thing, whatever is going to make the net profit margin high. If you're also saying the company is profitable. It means that the gross profit margin is also high. So we can say that the company is profitable. Their return on equity is very high. But if all of these things are not high, you can say the company is not profitable. This is because their net profit margin is this, their gross profit margin is this. These are all reducing because the company is not able to manage it direct and this and for the company is not making efficient use of its assets. Just say anything to convince the person that you are saying the company is not profitable. All right. If you come to the liquidity, the, the liquidity analysis, you are going to say that the company is highly liquid. Why is it highly liquid? Because their current ratio and quick ratio are not encouraging. You calculated the quick ratio and you are having 0 0.5 is to one. 0 0.5 is to one. It means that a company cannot use its available short-term resources to pay their current liabilities. If the company should, yeah, if the company should go, the company should decide that we are going to cease operation today. It means that part of their non-current assets will be used to settle their what? Uh, Short-term obligations. Or the company is using what we call aggressive working capital policy, financing both short-term investment and long-term investment through short-term activities or uh, short-term finances or funds. So you can say why this and this and what is the implication of having this particular ratio. 
the company is highly liquid because their current and this ratio are not what encouraging. If the trend continue like this, if the if the sequence should continue in this manner, it means that in the future the company might go out of business. The company yeah, might bankrupt. Go, yes, a lot of things that you say to convince a person why you are saying the company is not having enough cash. At the end of the day, whatever you say, you give your introduction. Based on all the ratio calculated, we can see that the company or the company or Kofi Chrome is not a profitable company and the company is not having a good financial position. Then you now give recommendation. What would they do? They should pay some of their what? Their long-term, what? their short-term what? Liabilities. They should raise or they should change them to equity shares or they should change or they should arrange with them and change it to a long-term what? Yeah. Loans or something like that. Just give them those kind of advice, the recommendation. That is all. Sometimes they can also ask you to calculate maybe gearing ratios. The gearing ratio is the debt to equity ratio and also capital gearing ratio. We have all done these things at the university level. My focus is not on this particular one. Let's pick one question and solve it. Then I'll send the ratio analysis to the page which was on financial reporting. You listen to it and you get everything of this one. I, I don't want to exclude this one. That's why I'm still doing it. All right. Let's pick one question and we look at what we are talking about. Okay. Let's look at this question. Okay, extracts from the account of beta company are as follows. Statement of profit or loss extracts. Revenue or sales is 1,556. Net profit is 67. Statement of financial position, extracts. Now current asset is 1,380. Inventories, 241. Receivables, 201. Cash, payables, shareholders fund, long-term borrowings. The total is this one. Analyze the performance of the company using three profitability words. Indicators. So what are the things that we are going to calculate? What are the ratios that we are going to calculate under this one? What are the ratios that we are going to calculate? What are the profitability okay. ratios that we are going to use? If they say profitability... Uh, net, net profit margin. Okay. So how do we calculate the net profit margin here? It will be 67 divided by what? The, uh, the revenue. Okay. Then multiply yeah. by 100. Uh, yeah. Can we use gross profit? Eight. No. No. Can we use gross, gross profit? profit? No. Okay. But we can use return on equity. Yes. Okay. The return on equity will be 67 over the shareholders fund. 1521. Okay. Mm -hmm. No. If we have return on equity, and uh, return equity, on okay. No capital employed. Yeah. Okay. So it will be 67 over this times 100. We can also calculate re return on capital what? Employed, which will be no, yeah. divided by this one multiplied by 100. Then the ratio yeah. that you have gotten, then you see whether the company is profitable or not. If the ratios are high, it means that the company is doing well. And what is making the companies to do well? Then you just start saying they are using their assets efficiently because if you look at the asset turnover ratio, you see that it will be favorable. All right. But yeah, the company does not have cash. So they are going to have liquidity problems. They don't have cash. They're going to have liquidity problems. So if you talk about liquidity too, you can do, this is how we do that. You just calculate the ratio sign, do a report on it. I've given you the format, and I'll do this one. Let's look at how to measure performance of responsibility centers. They say responsibility center, we are talking about divisions, departments, or units. How do we measure? the performance of responsibility centers. How do we measure responsibility centers? So we call something that responsibility accounting. Responsibility accounting means you have to be held accountable for all the things that are under your care. That is a responsibility accounting. Whatever is given to you, at the end of the day, you have to come and account for it. Are you okay? If you have various divisions. Management for various divisions have to account for whatever they have done at the end of the financial year or at the end of the reporting year. So responsibility accounting is basically talking about 
responsibility accounting is basically talking about you being held responsible for anything that is under your care. So if you have various divisions, the management of the, the division one will be held accountable for whatever performance that is attributable to that division. If you are making laws, it is the management that will be or the manager or the person who is a superior over there will be held responsible for that particular bad performance. So responsibility accounting means everyone being held responsible for their what? Their duties or their assignments. And if you are doing responsibility accounting, we use what we call controllability profits or controllable profits, or we use what we call controllability principles. Controllability principles. If you talk about controllability principles, means that we only we can only use things to judge the people, or we can only use what people are being responsible for, what is under their control. Right now, I cannot be blaming the performance of Ghana on any of the students here. Yes, I can't say, Porsche, you are the cause for Ghana's, Ghana's this, the, you, are the, you are the cause for these issues happening in Ghana. No, this particular thing is not under your control. But if I should give you money that go and buy something for me, and you don't use the money well, I can blame you for whatever is coming from you misusing the money. Because the money is under your control. So if you are talking about responsibility accounting, you are talking about we can only use things that management can control to measure their performance. So we use we call something controllability principles. We only use performances that are controlled under management to measure their performance. So if at the end of the day, you are looking at the profit of the company and the profit there was or there has been apportionment of overhead cost from head office. No, that overhead cost is not under the control of the manager. So we can't use that particular overhead to measure his performance. So we, we only look the profit that is under his control. So we take the profits, then we take those expenses that are directly attributable to his division. His division or his department, we subtract it from the revenue and get the profit. It is that profit that we are going to use to measure the performance. Because those costs from the head of office is not under his control. He doesn't control those costs. So he's supposed not to be held responsible for those costs. So we only use those costs that are under the control of the management or the manager or the division manager to measure his performance. The only thing that he's accountable for, the only thing that he's responsible for, those are the things that we use to measure his performance. So we call something controllability profit and traceable what? Profits. Controllability profit and traceable profits. If you are talking about controllability profits, controllability profits, if you are talking about controllability profits, controllability profits, we are talking about the profits arising from the division. How do we calculate this profit? Is the total revenue for the division minus the total cost that are under the control for the division. So the costs that are under the control for the division, that is the, the, the controllability profit. The profit that the management or the division manager has control over. But if you talk about traceable profit, is the profit that is traceable or the profit that is traceable that can be traced to the division. With this one, we take the revenue for the division and subtract all the, all the cost all the cost attributable to the division. So if there is any cost apportionment from the head office will be trust, will be subtracted from the revenue to get the traceable profits. So if the head office is giving them, is sharing depreciation to them, the depreciation will be subtracted from the division's profit to get a traceable profit. But if you're looking at controllable profits, the apportionment or depreciation over there will not be subtracted as a cost from the revenue because the depreciation over there is from the head office, which is not under the control of the division. So if you talk about controllable profit, we are only calculating the profit that is relating to the division, the profit that is earned directly from the operations of the division. But if you are talking about traceable, is the total profit taking into consideration the total cost in care, those are portion from head office, those in care by the division from the revenue to get a traceable profit. But we have examples of 
responsibility centers. We have a, examples of responsibility centers. The first one was called cost center. Cost center. And they say cost center. Why does it, why is the meaning? Cost center. Dressing, cost center. Cost center. It's a center uh, in which um, cost is accumulated. Okay. Okay. Cost center is a production or service location or function activity or an item of equipment for which costs are accumulated. This place is, is only for cost. We only incur cost. We don't generate revenue. The only thing that is incurred over there is cost. The only thing that is incurred over there is cost. There is no generation of revenue there. There is no generation of revenue there. It's only cost that can be incurred in that particular division. So that division is only cost that we incur there. It's only cost that we incur there. We don't generate revenue. All right. If you talk about revenue center, Revenue center. Uh, one may say it will be a production location or service location where revenue is mobilized. Okay. For revenue center is also responsible for generation of only revenue. No cost is in care. Cost center is responsible for accumulating. We only go there in care cost. It's only cost that is in care there. No revenue is generated. Revenue center is only revenue that is generated from that particular center. No cost. No cost. Let's come to profit center. Did they say profit center? Uh, they generate revenue as well as incur costs. So at the end, they get the profit resulting from the two. Okay. So the profit itself, profit is we subtract cost from. Revenue to get profit. So if they say profit center, it means that they, they incur both costs and also generate what? Revenue. The next one is investment center. Investment center. So they also behave like profit center in that the investments they undertake is a cost. So the return they get from it is also revenue. So they also incur costs and do investment. Okay. Okay. The investment center operates as independent units. So what they do is that they incur costs, they generate revenue, but they also undertake capital investments. They can stand up and buy assets on their own. They can stand up and carry out investment decisions on their own. But for the profit center, they don't carry out investment activities. They can't invest yeah. on their current assets. They can't do long-term investment. They only yeah. generate revenue and what cost. In care costs. Yeah. But for the investment center, the only difference is that they, they can embark on what? Capital investment decisions. But for profit center, they only generate costs and do so. That is the difference between them. That is the difference between them. So maybe in the exam, they can ask you the difference between profit center and investment center. All right. Okay. Let's look at how we measure the performance of investment centers. We measure performance of investment centers because these people, they are just like, they are like independent units. Basically, we use three three measurement mm -hmm. indicators to measure mm -hmm. the performance of these particular investment centers. The first one is what we call return on investment, which is the ROI, return on investment, which is calculated as the same as the return on capital employed, which is the net profit before tax over net operating what? Assets, net operating assets. So it's basically the same as return on capital what employed. All these yeah. things are multiplied by 100. The next one that we use is residual income. Residual income. The residual income, what we normally do is that, okay, if 
if our profit for the year is 30,000 and our net asset is 120,000 and they are saying that the return that we should pay on the net asset is 10%. The return that we should pay on net asset is 10%. How what would be the return that we are going to pay on the net asset? It will be twelve thousand. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in actual sense, what would be the profit that we made? Eighteen thousand. It will be what? Eighteen thousand. So the residual income. Yeah. The idea is that, assuming we are to pay for the investment, we are to pay for those things that generated the profits. What should be the profit after paying for them? So it means that we have 120,000, the 120,000 help us to generate a profit of 30,000. And they say that at the end of the day, the cost that we are going to incur on the 120,000 is 10%. So after paying the 10%, what should have be the profit left? That is the residual income. That is the idea of the residual income. Supposing we are to pay for the investments that help us to get the profit, what will be the actual profit left? That is the residual income. So the residual income, what we do is that is the profit minus the cost on the or the investment is the profit minus the cost on the investment, which is calculated as if you have time read the problems and those things, which is calculated as net profit before after tax minus cost of capital times what capital invested. The capital invested is the return on the investment. What I should write now is the twelve thousand. The question will always give you the required rate of return or the cost of capital. Then you mm. apply it on the total investment or the total capital invested. Then you subtract it from the profit. Let's be question one. Then we know what we are doing. Question one. Which we did? Super Express Transport Company runs a fleet of buses on a cross in Yani route, which is considered a business unit. The following is an extract from the final accounts of the company as at the last operating year. Stock of buses on that route at cost less depreciation is 660,000. And net operating profit is 198,000. One of the buses bought three years ago at the cost of 150,000 was not performing efficiently because it got involved in an accident just a year after it was purchased. Although the damage was minor, the operations manager suggested that the bus be scrapped in spite of the fact that it earned a profit of 6,000 in the year. Depreciation is at the rate of 20% per annum on straight line. Required, evaluate the effect of this proposal on the performance of the business unit if return on investment is used to measure performance of subunits. Okay, so they say we should evaluate the effect of this proposal on the performance of the business unit if return on investment is used to measure performance of what subunits. What is the proposal that you are talking about? What is the proposal that you are talking about? Of disposing of the bus that was involved in an accident. Okay, so they are talking and about what would, taking uh, its effects. Okay, if you um, have done that, what would be the effect of the performance on the what? Yeah, on the, the company. So what we do is that before we do, we we calculate the return on investment when the asset was there. Then yeah. we do it after the asset is not there. Then we know the effect. Yeah. That's how we do it. Whenever they give you that yeah. calculate the effect, you do it before, before you are not carrying out the proposal. What was the return on investment? What was the performance? And after carrying it, what is the performance now? Then you look at the two and see whether they should scrap it off or they should not scrap it off. All right. So let's move on to the first side. Okay. So that is question one, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Question one. So we are going to do before. Before. 
and after. Okay. So before we have our R O I to be equal to net profit before interest and tax over what? Net investment. Am I correct? All of this multiplied by what? All of this multiplied by 100. All right. Okay, so let's come to the let's go to the question now. Before, what was the profit? One ninety eight thousand. One ninety eight thousand. That was a profit before. And what was the what was the net the net investment? One ninety eight thousand divided by the net investment was what? Stock of buses on that route at cost less depreciation. So this is the net. Yeah, less depreciation, six hundred sixty. Okay, six hundred sixty thousand. Okay. Yeah. All of this multiplied by one hundred. So what will be our return on investment? I'm getting 30%. Am I correct? There are people in this class. Um, yes. I'm getting 30. 10 people. Okay. I'm getting 30. You should confirm that it is correct. Okay. After. What will be the after they have taken the proposal? What will yes. be the effect on the profit? The, the machine that they want to scrap now, what is the profit that they are taking? Mm. Six thousand every year. So it means that if you are striving in that six thousand profit will not be there again, isn't it? Yeah. So what will now be the, our new profit now? If we decide to scrap that particular one, what will be our new profit? One ninety two thousand. One ninety two thousand. If you are scribing it, it means that this will also go with what? The cost of the. They are also carry, they are carrying value as at the day that we mm. are scribing it. Are you okay? Yeah. The fifty, the one fifty, the one fifty thousand over here. Their carrying value is being included in this one. So if you are scribing it, it means that it will go together with the carrying value. So the carrying value will not be the same. This 60,000 will not be the same again. The one that we are scribing will also go and the value will reduce. But the question now is, what is the carrying value as of the day that we are doing this? Let's read the question. One of the buses bought three years ago. Bought three years what? Ago. Ago. At the cost of what? 150 was 150. efficiently because it's involved in an accident just a year after it was purchased. Although the damage was minor, the operations manager suggested that the bus be scrapped in spite of the fact that it earned a profit of 6,000 in the year. So if you are taking the bus of 6,000 profit, you are not going to get it again. So your profit will reduce 192. Depreciation is at a rate of 20% annual on straight line basis. So if you're using 20%, how many years is that? Three years. 20% is how many years? 20% per annum, one year is 30,000. So for no, the three I'm talking years, about if you want to change the 20% to, to years, how many years is that in total? Five. That is five, eight, five, five years, 100 divided by 20. That will give you five years. All right. So we have used three years already, isn't it? Yes. So how many years will be left for the machine? To be two years. Okay. Let's look at depreciation. I hope all of you will know what we call depreciation. Okay. All right. Let me just let me not just add depreciation. If you are having 20%, the machine every year you are going to use 20% of the machine. It means that for you to use this machine 
uh, fully, it will be hundred percent if you use it fully, isn't it? Yeah. So how many twenties is going to give you the twenty, the hundred percent? Is five, isn't it? Yeah. So we can assume that this machine is having five years, and the cost five is, useful years. Okay, five useful years, which the cost is what one fifty. So it means that one yeah. year. One year will be what? 30,000. Am I correct? 30,000, yes. Okay. But this machine is having a remaining useful life of what? Two years. Two we have years. used the machine for three years. So if it is having remaining useful life years of two years, it means that it is 60,000 of the machine that is left. Yeah, that is it. That Are is you on it. the same line? So if it is 60,000, then we now take the 60,000 from the this is 60,000. What are we going to have? You get okay. 600. Okay. So if, if I do a calculation, what am I going to get? You get 600. Yeah. I've done that. So if I do all the calculations, what am I going to get? This one. 192 divided by 600. You get 32%. 32 percent. Percent. So, what are you going to say? Yeah, it's better off to dispose of the asset. Okay. So, you can see that after disposing the, after scrubbing the, 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 the machine or the bus. The company is now having a higher return than it was there. It means that the, 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 they are not even using the, the bus very well because of the, yeah. the accident. It's not efficient again. So it is giving us, yeah. we are incurring more, more costs, but it is giving us low what, return. So it's better return. We, should, we, should, we should scrub it. That is it. Let's look at the next question. Let's look at the next question. The bottle labeling division of Crash Drink Limited currently has capital employed of 100,000 Ghana cities and earns an annual profit after depreciation of 18,000 Ghana cities. The divisional manager is considering an investment of 10,000 Ghana cities in an asset which will have a 10 year life with no residual value and will earn a constant annual profit after depreciation of 1,600. The cost of capital is 15%. Required, calculate the following and comments on the results. Okay. A. The return on divisional investments before and after the new investments. B, the divisional residual income before and after the new investments. Okay. So we do it before. Sometimes they will not give you before and after, but you always have to do it for you to know the effect. You have to know what yeah. was the stand before mm. you are doing the new investments and what is the stand now. So you always do that before and then after. Sometimes the question will not give you that, but you, you are going to do that yourself. Okay. All right. Let's come to this one. So let's do before for the first one. That will be question two, right? Yes. Okay. So before for the R O I. So we go and look for our profit, our profit before. What was our profit before? Uh, it's 18,000 after depreciation. Okay. So our profit was 18,000. And what was our total investment there? 100,000. Okay. 100,000. All of this multiplied by 100. 100. So we get 18%. So... This will give us 
ओके लेट्स कम टू आफ्टर आफ्टर व्हाट इज हैपनिंग वी आर गोइंग टू कैरी आउट एडिशनल इन्वेस्टमेंट इज इट इट Yes. And this additional investment will give us profit of what? One thousand six hundred. So, what will be our total profit after we carry out the investment? Nineteen six hundred. So we add the initial profit to the original one. So eighteen thousand. That will give us nineteen. Nineteen six hundred divided by, since we are carrying out the investment, our. Our initial investment will also increase, isn't it? Okay. Yes. What is the value of the investment that we are carrying out? One hundred and ten thousand. Ten thousand. So if you add it to the new one, it will give us what? One, one ten. ten. Don't go and calculate depreciation. We are doing this thing now. We are doing this thing now, not a year time. So the ten years, we only use the asset. We are considering the, de the decision now, not at the end of the year. It's now that we are doing it. So no depreciation will be calculated on the asset. All right, so that will give us one ten, one ten, and all of this will be multiplied by hundred, by hundred. What are we getting? Seventeen point eight one percent. Seventeen point eight one what? Percent. Percent. So is it? It's not it? advisable. Okay, so let's now count to the residual income. residual income residual income will also do before and after isn't it yes so residual income will give us residual income will give us will be equal to the profit which is 18000 am i correct yes minus the cost minus cost of capital minus cost of capital so the cost of capital will be into bracket the cost of capital is 1 Ten percent, right? Fifteen percent. Okay, so that will be one point one five times the investment, the money that we yeah, so we'll give it fifteen thousand. So the investment is what? Is hundred thousand? Yes. So if you calculate it on it, we are getting fifteen thousand. So residual income will give us three thousand. Residual income will give us three thousand. Yeah. Okay. Let's count to after. The after our residual income will be this. Residual income will be the new profits now, which is 19 what? 600. 19, 600. Money is the cost of capital on the new investments, which is 0 0.15 times the 110. Am I correct? Yeah. Okay. That will give us how much? We we'll get sixteen five hundred. Sixteen. Sixteen five hundred. As the cost of capital. As the cost of capital. So if you subtract, what are you getting? Minus nine six hundred. You get three thousand one hundred. Okay, you can see that one is one of them is, is showing unfavorable results, and one of them is showing favorable results. Yeah, it, so what are you a marginal increase of hundred thousand? So what are you going to say about your this? They say you should comment on the results. Yeah, if residual income is used for performance evaluation or assessment. Then the investment is worthwhile. But if return on investment is used, then it's not favorable. Okay. That is all. If the company is going to use return on investment for appraising the division, then they should not carry out the investment. But if they are going to use residual income, then they can go ahead and carry out what? The investments. All right. Let's try. Let's try. Seventeen 
said the platform is so silent. I don't know. I mean, the people they are doing different things. They are just they 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 join the meeting and they are doing different things on there. So try calling me so that we see whether they respond. Me, I am here. Are you not okay? Maybe you are getting what we are doing, so you don't want to talk. I'm following his motion. Okay. At least questions for clarification, people have been asking. But it feels quiet. Let's let's solve the question for. Question four. Question. Are you the so what about three? The three. Mm. I want. I want. Are we going similar? It's similar to what we are going. Yeah, I want to solve a very complex question. Okay. Okay. This. This. This three two. Okay. He is paid a bonus of five percent on a divisional. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we should solve the three and leave the four. If we can solve the two. Okay. Therefore, if they say someone is paid a bonus of five percent on the on a, on the division residual income after charging the bonus. The bonus. It That's means that. Out. Yeah. It means that what they are saying is that the the income that they are talking about, they have already charged the division. They have already charged the bonus on it. So what we normally do is that sometimes they can say before charging bonus, after charging bonus. It mm. means that if you are having five percent, you are having five percent, and the money that you are having, the money that the profit that you are going to charge the bonus on is two thousand. It means mm. that you have already charged the bonus before getting what? 5,000. Um, so what you do is that it means that if you want to use the rate, then you now increase the figure. The so base. you have five mm. divided by 105. 105. Yeah, yeah, the 105 is the already one that you have already charged. So if you want to know it, you have to gross it by making this one 105 because you have already charged mm. the commission or the bonus. That is what we do. But if they say before charging the bonus, it means that you yeah, have to charge true. the bonus before getting this. So it will be five over 100. Yeah. All right. mm. So that is the only thing that you do there. So you calculate your residual income. The residual income, what you are going to use is the rate of return. Is the 22% that you are going to use. Sometimes it will give you rate of return. Rate of return, not cost of capital. So this question, let me see. Pell, Pell is a divisional manager of Moro, Morovia Limited. He is paid a bonus of 5% on the residual on the division residual income after charging the bonus. The division is currently considering an additional investment of 20,000 with a 10 year useful life, but new residual value. The investment is expected to yield a profit after depreciation of 5,600. This will augment the existing capital employed of 1,050,000. That currently offers 264,400 after. Depreciation okay. annually. The company policy is to accept investment projects that provide a return of at least 22%. So they okay. already have an investment which is 1,500,000 is giving you a profit of this. So what you do is that you calculate what is the what is the required rate of return before and after. So after your profit will now be this plus this, the new profit plus this will be your profit. And your new investment will be the 200,000 plus the old one. Then you get the after. Before will be this over this. Then the old profit over the old investment will give you the before. After you add the profit, the two, the new investment now will increase the profit. You add it. The new investment will now increase the capital employed. You do it and you get it. If you come to residual income to, you calculate the 22% on the old investment, which is the 1,050,000, you get that, you subtract it from this profit. If you come to after, you add the profit there too, you add the investment to the two and calculate your what? 22% on it and take it from the profit. 
But if you are coming to do the commission or the bonus, what will be the percentage? What will be the percentage change in the bonus of Pearl if the investment is added to the division existing operations? So what you do is that what is your first before? What is your first residual income? You do five over 105 times that particular residual income. What is your residual income now? Which is the current one after? You do five over 105 times that. What is the difference between them? You find the difference divided by the initial bonus times 100. That is how we calculate the change in percentage change in the bonus. Let's look at the question four and we look at EV. All right. Justin, let's move on. Question four. I'm not saying, uh huh. I it, I limited is an organization with two divisions, A and B, each with its own cost and revenue streams. Each of the two divisions is classified as investment services. The company's cost of capital is 12%. Historically, investment decisions have been made by calculating the return on investment. A new manager who has recently been appointed in Division A has argued that using residual income to make investment decisions will result in better goal congruence throughout the company. The data below shows the current position of the division as at the end of 31st December 2016. So details of projects, we have project A, project B. Capital required under project A is 82.8 million. Project B is 40.6 million. And then sales generated is 44.6 million. And then for project B, we have 21.8 million. Net profit margin under project A, we have 28%. Under project B, we have 33%. The, the company is seeking to maximize shareholders' wealth, assuming that Division A acquired a more efficient asset at 15 million and Division B sold one of its assets with written down value of 24 million. And profits are expected to increase and decrease by 11 million and 5 million for Division A and B respectively. Required A, calculate both the current return on equity and residual income for each of the divisions. B, calculate, the, calculate and comment on the effects of the decisions to invest in the new asset and disposal of some assets. And disposal of some assets will have, will have on the current um, ROI and RI, return okay. on investment. In okay. So the first one, we, the first question A over here, they are just asking us to do before. The current, the current is the before the current now after assuming they haven't taken the decision what should have been the 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 return on investment and residual income all right what do we need to calculate return on investments we need profit and what capital required or capital invested isn't it just dressing is that what we need yes okay but do we have the profits here in this question no. But we are giving net profit margin, isn't it? Yes. Net profit margin means what? Net profit margin is um, a margin on the sales. Okay, so for you to know the net profit margin, what are you going to do? Just what are you going to do for you to know the net profit margin? For the A and the B, what are you going to do? Yes, I can hear. Yes, 
that's your line, your line is breaking. Mm. Baba, for us to get a net profit, what are we going to do? We apply 20% on the sales revenue. I'm saying that is it the, I'm saying that is it the, for project A and for project B, 33% on the uh, sales generated. So we'll get 12.49 million and then 7.19 million respectively. Okay, so that is question four. So for question four, we need to get a profit for all of them. So the profit for profit for project A, profit for project A will be equal to the, the net profit margin on the sales. Okay. So profit for project A, profit. For project, for project A will be equal to 0 0.33, am I correct? Or 0 0.28? Uh, the point, the point 0.28. Okay, multiply by. Times 44.6 million. 44.6 million. What are we getting? We get twelve point four nine. So profit for project A. Twelve point four nine. Yeah. Okay. For project B. For project B. For project B, what are we going to get? We're going to apply 0 0.33 on 21.8. So 0 point, 0 0.33 multiply by 28. 21.8. Okay, 21. Point six. Eight. Point eight. Okay. Yes. So I guess seven point one nine. Okay. So we get seven point one nine. Okay. So profit will be seven point one nine. Yes, million. So we can now go ahead to calculate the current, the current R O, the current R O I, which will give us R O I is equal to the twelve point one for project A. Okay, let me add for project A here. For project A, is the same as division A. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that will give us 12.4 divided by 82.8. Divided by what? 82.8. 82.8. All of this answer multiplied by what? 100. 100. What are you getting? Okay. 15.08. Okay. 15.08. Okay. 15.08. Okay. Okay. So we do the current, the current. RI to residual income to. Okay, let's read for the project 
Should we do it for the should you do the array for project two two before we come to the okay? Let's do it for project one project B also before we come to the RA for project for project B. Yeah, so for the um return on investment, yeah, it is always is it the net profits before interest and tax or net profits after net, tax net profit divided by the net tax. tax. Okay. okay. Then divided by the net asset. And then the, yes. net, the net asset is the capital employed. Exactly. Okay. So R O I R O I is equal to for project B is what? It is 7.19, am I correct? One nine eight divided by forty point six point six or multiply by hundred. Kafi, where are you coming from? Daddy, Porsche, where are you coming from? Daddy is Louisa, not Porsche. Okay, where are you coming from? I was at the background, listen. Really? Yes. What is that? What is the answer? Seven point one nine. Okay, let's come to RI for project A. We see your income be equal to the profit which is 12.49 okay what is the cost of capital 12 percent so 0 0.12 multiplied by the return on investment 0 0.12 Multiply by the return on investment, which is 82.8. What are we getting? The RA, the RI is equal to 12.49 minus 0 0.12 times 82.8. That will give us nine. 9.84. Nine I'm getting 9.94. Maybe conversion. The cost of capital is 12%. Too. Yes. So I'm getting my R I to be equal to two point. Five five two point five five million. Okay, R I for projects. For project B, mm -hmm. will be R I is equal to. 7.1 million, am I correct? Minus into brackets 0 0.12 multiplied by 40.6 million. What are we getting? Ri is equal to. I'm getting two point three two million. 
That is the first one. The next one, what are they saying? The company is seeking to maximize shareholders' work, assuming that Division A acquires a more efficient asset at 15 million. So what will happen to the, the project A? Their capital required is going to increase by 15 million, isn't it? Is that it? Hey, it's my people here. Yeah, they are there. So it means that the 15 million is going to include the capital required for project A. All right. And if you be sold one of each asset with, with written down value of 24 million. So it means that the project B capital required is going to reduce by what 24 million, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. And profit are expected to increase by 11 million. It means that a current profit, which is 12.49 will not increase mm. by 11 for project A. Yeah. And a profit which is now 7.19 for project B will, will not decline by, by 5. 5, five. five. Yeah. million. So, Charlie, uh, you should go ahead and try that one. My bro. <laughs> Let's look at EV. Hey. <clears throat> You say what brand are you referring to another new thing? Yeah, let's let's look at I want I want to be at least let's have all in transfer pricing le left so that uh next week you can finish that one and start the uh, this thing uh investment appraiser one thing decision making. Maybe the if I you do the intro, then maybe next week we we'll, uh, we'll work we'll do a workings on that. Okay, so next week we should do that too. We should just do the even a transfer price now. Exactly. Okay. Because today I see that the, the platform is not active. Yeah, the people questions are, are not coming, which is not usual of the class. I mean the people they just join and leave the team there. Uh to play back the radio video. Yeah, they are doing different things. So let's 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 leave the EVA mm. and the transfer prices so that we finish the two next week. Then we God willing, with... yeah. Mm. Oh, because week, the yeah. active participation is good. Questions we ask and makes it participatory. Mm. Mm.